Now, I'm not a web dev, but I do need to make websites sometimes. And so because of that, I feel like I'm on an endless quest to find the easiest, best, frictionless way to just get a website up and running that just works, is lightweight and easy to set up, lets me focus on the content that I wanna write and the information I wanna display. Did I mention easy and simple? And I think I found it. I think I found my new favorite way to make websites, which is what brings us to this video here. This is what feels like just an annual review of my favorite way to make a website. And I guess this is the 2023 edition. So yes, Hazel My Game Engine now has a brand new website, which you can see over here. This is what it looks like. Of course, it also looks nice on mobile. And this is what the Hazel website used to look like. This was the Hazel website up until now. And now we have switched to something that I think is a lot nicer, a lot more simple. It's got a really easy way for us to write like some articles just using Markdown, which is fantastic. And more importantly, it solves some of the serious issues that we had with this site and with the approach that I took to building this. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I made the old site and why that wasn't good enough. I'm also obviously gonna talk about how I made the new site and what technology I used for that. And then in the second half of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up a website like this from scratch. I'll show you the whole process from scratch that you can use to get up and running with basically the same setup that we're using here for this new Hazel Engine website. Okay, so first and foremost, this old Hazel Engine website, how was this made? Well, to give a little bit of history, I knew that what I basically wanted was just a static website. Like I don't need people to be able to log in. I don't need various authors writing content using a web interface like WordPress would provide. You know, I didn't want any of that. I didn't want like this huge PHP backend. I just wanted HTML. I honestly just wanted to keep this as simple as possible. And so what I did is I bought this. This is not that expensive. It's an HTML5 template called Canvas. I'm sure a lot of you who do any kind of web dev have probably heard of it because it seems pretty popular. There's like 75 different themes basically included here. I picked one, I heavily customized it, and this is the result. We have a static website that is literally just a series of HTML pages, and that is it. I mean, of course, there's some JavaScript as well, but this is probably as simple as you can get. Now, the downsides. Oh, the downsides. There's a, quite, a, quite a few downsides, turns out. The biggest downside is just the sheer amount of HTML code duplication, because HTML does not have a way to include other HTML files, which makes sense. It's just a markup language. So if we take a look over here at the old site, what that means is that we have, you know, like this head section, for example, with a whole bunch of stuff, the header with the logo and like a search, the primary navigation bar, that's this section over here that obviously is present on every single page, not to mention like this footer as well. Like this footer, this copyright, everything, everything that you see over here in the bottom, that's going to be present on every single page because as the pages change, we just change the content in the middle. That's how a lot of websites work. So then how do I get that to happen? Well, I have to go into every page and make sure that I have the exact same code, if you can even call it code, the, the exact same content. And if one of these changes, I have to go through every page and update it manually. Now, yes, this sounds horrific, but when there are only like four or five pages and it's a static website that isn't constantly being updated. It's not like the worst thing in the world, but clearly it, it kind of sucks, right? Now this kind of limitation on HTML uh, is obviously common. Uh, everyone knows about this, which is why people generally create engines or applications that generate HTML. In fact, that's what basically every single way to develop websites really is, because of course, at the end of the day, the content that's being served to your browser is going to be in HTML. You don't really stumble upon a website and oh, that's not written in HTML, it's written in another language. It almost always ends up being HTML at the end of the day. And so then when you're deciding how to make a website, it usually comes down to how do I wanna generate that HTML? And that could be anything from you know, PHP or Node.js, which at the end of the day will spit out HTML or something much more simple than that, a static site generator. Now static site generators are fantastic. I discovered these probably around a year or two ago. And what these tend to do is they tend to generate HTML based on some form of input. At its core, the most simple case that I see for static site generators is basically, hey, 
I would like to include HTML files and other HTML files. So how about this? I write an HTML file called like header or footer.html. And then I'm going to put, you know, all of this code that belongs to the footer inside that footer.html file. And then maybe I can just somehow include my footer HTML here. And of course, this isn't valid HTML. But the static site generator is an application that will parse this and it will just copy and paste the contents in like an include in C++ or something like that. That's already miles better because now elements that are common, I can just store centrally and just have them be included. So that for me was a starting point. I honestly just wanted a way to do this because that still keeps everything really super clean and flexible. It's just HTML at the end of the day, I can edit HTML directly. And the thing about these static site generators is they're not constantly running. It's not like when you open, say, a WordPress website or a Node.js website, the server has to run and execute something and then serve your browser with that generated HTML basically every single time. I mean, of course, there's going to be some caching going on. But aside from that, it's still, hey, server, I'm requesting something. I need you to now do something. No, these static sites, they don't get generated every time you browse to them. You build them. It's kind of like compiling a program. You just build them from this source material that you've created. And then it generates a bunch of HTML files into a directory, which you then serve. That, that directory that it generates into, that's your directory that you serve as your website. So all you're doing is pre-generating a bunch of HTML files and then that's your website, which just means that anytime you do want to update, say, this footer or this HTML in that source directory, you just rerun the static site generator to regenerate the page or the entire website, and you're done. So I did a bunch of research on static site generators. I tried some of them out, and the one that I just loved, honestly, was Hugo. Hugo is 100% free. It's open source. It's super simple and super fast, but yet it's quite deep and it's quite complex and you can do quite a lot with it. Now, the thing that really sold me, I think, towards Hugo was, well, their documentation, first of all, was really, really nice and clean and straightforward, but also they have a lot of themes. They have a bunch of themes. You can see how many they have for each category. There's a lot of themes here. And to me, that was really important because first of all, it speaks to the popularity of this framework. If there's a lot of themes, that means probably a lot of people use it. But then also we come back to the how easy is this to set up? And if there's a lot of themes to choose from, then I'm probably not going to have a problem finding something that I like for Hazel. And I'm not going to have to spend too much time designing something myself. So there's plenty of really nice looking themes here. But for the Hazel Engine website, I ended up picking this one here called Tail Bliss. There's a live demo, which is really nice. You'll notice it looks quite similar to the Hazel Engine website because I am using this theme. Of course, I ended up customizing the colors and a lot of the other parts of the site as well, which was really easy to do. And by the way, there's also a light theme for those of you who prefer that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can set something like this up yourself. And for that, we're gonna be using Hostinger, the sponsor of this video, because they have a fantastic Black Friday sale on at the moment. Okay, so all you have to do is go to hostinger.com slash churno. If we scroll down over here, you can see they have a bunch of VPS hosting plans. You can pick anything you like. Honestly, for just a static website, the first tier will be good enough. And you can always scale up really easily if you need to. Now, specifically for what we're doing here, there are a couple of important things that Hostinger has here. First of all, full root access. That's obviously very important because we want to be able to fully control our server. They use NVMe disks, which of course perform really well. And that's going to help us quickly generate these websites as well as their AMD Epic CPUs that they use are also really fast. So if we just go ahead and add this to cart, it's really important that you click this have a coupon code and you type in Cherno because that's going to give you an even bigger discount. You can see that's gone down from 79 to $71. Now, once you you have purchased a hosting of VPS, it's super easy to set up and probably take you less than 10 minutes. All you have to do is pick your operating system, set your root password, pick your region. And then here we are in the dashboard. So I'm going to grab this IP address. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new SSH host. So I'm using remote SSH. I talked about this in a previous video, but basically it's an extension for Visual Studio Code, which I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're going to be doing any kind of remote server work like this, because it basically just makes it feel like you're just doing it locally. So over here, I'm going to add a new new SSH host. I'm going to type in SSH root at that IP address and I'm going to put it into my config. Then I'm going to hit F1, connect to host. I'm going to connect to that host. I'm going to type in my root password, which I hope I remember. And then we can just go ahead and open a folder. Let's go ahead and put this into like var www. I'll open this for now. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder here though called Hugo. And then inside Hugo, I'm just going to open in integrated terminal. So now I have a terminal ready to go. So if we go to the documentation here, there's a getting started guide and a quick start. Let's first of all install Hugo on Linux. The way I did this is I just used the pre-built binaries on the latest release page. So there's a bunch over here. Now there are two editions. There's 
just a normal Hugo and there's a Hugo Extended. I recommend the Extended one because it just has more features. And if you're going to use the Tail Bliss theme, for example, you have to use the Extended one because Tail Bliss will not work with just regular Hugo. So that's an important thing to know. So we're going to go ahead and grab this Hugo Extended version. We're going to grab the amd64.deb package over here. So we'll copy this, copy the link address. And then I'm just going to use wget over here to just acquire this. It's going to go ahead and download and you'll see it over here in your Explorer as well. Now all I have to do to install it is just run d package like that dash i and then that file basically. And that's going to go ahead and install Hugo. And if I just run Hugo, you can see it works, right? So I can type in Hugo version, for example, and it will tell me that I have this version installed, which is great. So now back to the documentation on the quick start page, if we take a look at this, we just need to create a new site over here and then grab some kind of theme for this. So if I just type in Hugo new site and I'll call it example, it's going to go ahead and create this example folder with a lot of this content. So you can see we've got example.org, my new Hugo site, that kind of stuff here. And then probably the easiest way to add a theme is just to initialize this as a Git repository and just add the theme as a Git submodule into the themes directory. So if we go back to the themes that Hugo has, I'm going to grab this one here called paper because it's really simple. You can see a demo of it over here, by the way, it's got a light and a dark theme as well, which is nice. So if we go ahead and click on download, I'm going to grab the URL, I'll go into the example directory over here and do git init. And then I'll just do git submodule add, I'll paste in that URL and I'll add it to themes slash paper. So that's it. I have a theme. It's called paper. You can see the contents over here, which is great. If I go back to this hugo.toml file, which has this like really basic config here, I can just set the theme here to be paper. Now, typically themes come with like example content. So you can see this example site has content layout, static, all of this stuff. So if you grab this content, for example, and you paste it into the root directory, this original content folder is just empty. So I can just go ahead and delete that. And I'll rename this content that we just paste it in to just be content. If I now just run Hugo to build this, you can see it's going to build like 39 pages that were inside that content directory. And that's going to go into this public directory. So you can see now that we have like an index HTML and all of this stuff has actually been generated. So now it's just a matter of pointing your web server at that public directory. So over here inside this Apache file, I'm just going to set that to be Hugo and then public, or I could just also copy the path to just make sure that my document root is set up correctly. There it is, Hugo example public. Now the Hazel website actually uses Nginx instead of Apache, but it's definitely trivial to set it up either way. And then if we navigate to this URL, you can see our <laughs> absolutely beautiful website over here. Now the CSS, you can see it looks like it's trying to fetch it from example.org. So back over here inside our config file, let's just make sure that this is in fact set to the correct URL. And if we just run Hugo again, hit refresh, there you go. So you can see we now have our beautiful Hugo site. Now all of these articles or pages that we have here, if we want to add a new one, we can just type in Hugo new content. And then if we take a look at the content, you can see there's like this post directory, for example. So we could just type in like post slash hello.md. That's going to go ahead and create it. Here it is hello.md. It's created it with today's date as well. Draft is set to true. So I'll have to set that to false if I want to see it on the website. Otherwise, it'll only appear in draft builds. And then I can just say something like hello, this is an example. And then if I go ahead and build this, I'll refresh the page. And then there it is. Hello. So this is my beautiful page. This is a featured article. That's why it's like pinned up the top, but that's just something this theme allows you to do. And again, I want to stress that if you do want to change any of this, it's just super easy to like, if we go back to the theme and then into layouts, we've got partials, we've got default inside default, we have list, which is what you're seeing over there. And then you can see here are our articles and how they're being displayed. If we scroll down a little bit, you'll see this featured article over here. And specifically, you can see here that there's an if greater than weight zero. So articles have like some kind of weight to them. And you can see this placeholder text one has a weight of 10. So if I was to change that, for example, and rebuild it, you can see it's no longer a featured article. So it's really easy to just go in here and change whatever really you need to change. The single HTML is what you see when you actually look at like a single page. So if we open up this, for example, this view here with like the way you have like previous and next article, that's all inside single. So here's, for example, the next and previous page. And it's just HTML that you can go ahead and customize the footer. For example, it's over here. If you want to change something or add something, maybe I want to stick something in to the footer of like every page or something like that. I can just chuck that in there. And then you can see that there's my little hello text over here in the footer. So easy.
Easy, simple, wonderful, works really well. I love this workflow inside Visual Studio Code with like the terminal. I don't know, I think this is my favorite way at the moment to make any kind of static website. If I just need to get some information out onto the web in a simple, easy, but yet extendable and powerful enough way where I'm not repeating myself and I'm still keeping the actual data, the actual content clean in Markdown files in this case, I think Hugo is just amazing. I'll have a link obviously in the description below to Hugo, to the new Hazel website, to the Tailbliss theme, to the paper theme, and of course also to hosting.com slash churno. They're having an amazing Black Friday sale up until the 3rd of December. So go ahead and grab yourself a VPS if you need one before it's too late and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.